Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. Uh, in this video, we're going to take the opportunity to, while well, we're having another little move around in the collection, to talk about some of the mannequins that we've got in the collection. And, you know, I'm never uh, been a specialist on uniforms or equipment, but these are set up in the collection to represent machine gunners uh, from different nations and sort of through the ages, really, of the Vickers machine gun. And what I'll do is I'll just sort of have a quick overview of these, hopefully enough to, for you to understand what machine gunners were wearing at the particular time and in that particular unit. And then uh, you go away and do the research on, uh, on any particular piece you want. I'll try and answer questions if you do have any. Uh, but like I say, it's the Vickers machine gun that, that we specialize in rather than the uniforms of equipment. These just add sort of a, a personal flavor, personal understanding uh, of that. And obviously there are some nuances in the personnel equipment that are machine gunner specific. So hopefully you can see that I'm wearing one of the nice new t-shirts that have arrived from Teespring this morning. Please go online at our shop and you'll see uh, all of the different designs that we've got. They're all based on some of the line drawings from the training manuals. So hopefully you like that. Please do consider supporting us on Patreon as well. And if you do support us on Patreon, you actually get discount off some of these t-shirts uh, through the discount codes that are available when you sign up. So you, I think it roughly works out equivalent of about three months uh, yeah, Patreon support for, for the discount, depending on which level you do. So, so worthwhile if you're considering a t-shirt and worthwhile just to support us anyway. So I'll take the camera off its stand now and just start to look at one of, the, one of these uniforms and give you a bit of a background about the, uh, about the unit and the period being portrayed. So this particular uniform and, and mannequin, and make no apologies for the fashion mannequins, they're cheap and plentiful, unlike some of the specialist collection ones, and we just like to divert our resources into machine gun specific kit rather than uh, yeah, these display items if we can. But th th this guy is set up as a representative machine gunner from the 2nd Manchester Regiment, which were the machine gun battalion of the second division in Burma in early 1945, based on some of the photos that we've had uh, out of the books by, mainly by Rex King Clark, who was the commanding officer of the battalion. And you know, he, he, he uh, documented his war diary, uh, his diaries uh, that have been published by, I think by the regiment of the Manchester, uh, by the museum of the Manchester regiment in the past few years. So at the top, you know, slouch hat, not just an Australian thing. Uh, all of these uniforms are, uh, normally sized for me uh possibly in my uh, younger days when we were doing living history and reenactment so the common comment whenever wearing a slouch chat is are you australian troops and and uh, you know this slouch chat was very much a british design from the early 1900s um and, and was adopted for sort of far east uh where um indian Ar british indian army issue uh, so much more so slouch hat on top uh, basic uniform here is actually a set of khaki drill uh, shirt and khaki drill trousers uh, dyed. So this is dye on dye. Uh, you can see the different wear here, um, where the collar's been, uh, you know, un underneath there. So it's dye on dye, jungle green, uh, and that's what it looks like. Um, Say so it's a, it's the standard sort of reproduction khaki drill uh, trousers and shirt from What Price Glory. Uh, in terms of uniform items, then at the base we've got putties and ammunition boots, and the ammunition boots are actually tied up with string as opposed to leather laces. So it's something that we found an account of um, based around the fact that leather laces rot. Now putties are more useful than anklets in in jungle inf uh, in environments because they uh, stop a lot more of the uh, of the water getting in and they um insects and things like that they're much much tighter around, around the ankle so yeah these are the same anklets that were still being worn into the 1980s by cadet units and training units uh they're a shorter version than the first world war anklet uh sorry the first world war putty they're the same putty um yeah rather than anklet uh yeah they, they do a very effective job um you know khaki the the Trousers, the khaki drill trouser designs very much the same as a battle dress trouser. So first field dressing uh, pouch there, a pocket there, and a large pocket on the front. Um, you know, it's not going to look too much different from behind. So we will uh, move on to the equipment. 
uh, after just saying perhaps that you know, the sh shirt sleeves roll down uh, for mosquito protection, insects, things like that. You know, shirt sleeves rolled up is very much an in-camp kind of thing, but you can really see how you know, the dye is variable. So to discuss the equipment, it's a real mix here of British made 1937 pattern uh, basic pouches with Indian made uh, braces and an Indian made belt, quite a late Indian made belt there with the black and steel fittings as opposed to you know, pretty pretty normal Mark II pouches. And, and in the pouches there, we've got some Sten magazines with inner rounds. And at some point we'll uh, do a video of how, they, how they're how loaded, um, working with the armourer's bench on that one. Uh, in the other, what have I got? I've got more Sten magazines in that one there. Uh, you know, the, the equipment of the mannequins isn't really too full. Um, because they don't support thing, the weight that well. Uh, also on his front, you've got a machete. Now, this isn't a standard type of machete. Um, it is an issue machete. What you've got is the, the back of the scabbard there is split, um, as opposed to it coming out the top. And you can see it's quite crudely made. I think they are Indian made. Um, they might be British issue 1945 dated this one's on a loan item into the collection that we've put on display so quite a few members of the association keep their equipment here as well um, or some of their items and you know in return we get to display some of that so yeah this is a sort of a, yeah, very much a far east machete as opposed to the uh, more common machete that actually saw service in in the um uh in northwest europe and everywhere you know which we, we, which we've got. So yeah, you can see quite a, quite a different design on that just hung on the front there. So we'll turn the mannequin round and be able to look at some of the equipment on the back. I suppose one of the questions is, is there anything specific about uh, this uniform and equipment for machine gunners? No, there isn't really. Uh, this is quite representative of any of the British infantry fighting in the Far East. Um, or certainly it's quite generic, you know, it, it's a mishmash of periods, but there's nothing specific about machine gunner equipment at this point. So now we've turned the mannequin round and you can see the back of the uniform. It, actually, the trousers have really faded. I hadn't quite noticed. Uh, yeah, they're almost back to their khaki drill. You can still see a tinge of green, but nothing more. Now, as I said, the webbing that's on an, this chap is a mix of uh, Indian made webbing. So this darker, sort of almost gray material and quite coarse weave uh, with these black fittings and some dyed uh, 37 pattern webbing as well. So uh, actually I think this is an Indian made um, water bottle carrier with the uh, buckle rather than the popper that you see on other, other water bottles. Um, and yeah, this is very much a, an Indian made strap. And I know this one was um, was originally just normal khaki before it was jungle green because that was one I dyed, as was the small pack as well. Yeah, we, we picked out some poor quality material uh, that we dyed uh, and the bayonet frog as well. well. Excuse the modern bungee, but that's what normally keeps these mannequins uh, secure against their <laughs> against their fitting bar there so they don't always fall down on us um or visitors so uh yeah some, some of it's dyed webbing um uh just as a, as a quick i wonder you know, i'm as intrigued as you are we, 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 well possibly not um i'm intrigued more so than some of you about what's in here uh because this stuff gets put up on display and is you know, i haven't probably you know, you looked in here for a while, so uh, forgive me for my inquisity. Okay, um, uh, oval shaped mess tin, which is the, um, I think this is an Indian made one. Uh, yeah, there we go, 1945, uh, come on. Um, Indian made mess tin in there. Uh, there's also a square mess tin and a dyed wash roll. Um, these are the sort of tin plate mist tins, what are they, 1941 dated, uh, in there, nothing else, anything else, um, a dyed towel, so jungle green stuff when it you know, affects some materials and turns blue, and then a uh, bottle of scat insect repellent, 
an American-made product that I believe was also issued to uh, British and Empire troops. Uh, that's all that's in there. Sometimes this mannequin also has one of the kukris that we've got in the collection fitted to it. But, um, you know, that, 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 that's, that's elsewhere at the moment. I think it fell off when he was being taken down. Now, the helmet, standard Mark II Tommy helmet with a very large uh, mesh net on there. So jungle, so again, these are, these are seen in the Far East, quite popular uh, over there. And not not often seen in the Far East, uh, but they do, is this Mark II Sten. Now this is a um, new spec DX that the bolt was taken out, you know, late 90s when they were really um, chopping these things up. Uh, but they did start to receive uh, the Mark II Sten gun, um, 9mm 32 round magazine, that's what we've got in the, in the pouches that we talked about. Uh, they did start to see these in the Far East from uh, from late 1944 certainly uh you know in 1945 so we've got you know images of second manchesters uh using those and they're also equipped with dodge weapons carriers as well uh, rather than 1500 well rather than british bedford 1500 weight trucks or universal carriers so there you go uh, i hope that's interesting uh we'll do we, you know we've got quite a few of the mannequins up here uh that we'll work through as we uh, get through the the displays um, and move these things around ready for visitors soon so I'll say thanks for watching uh, usual spiel to come please do listen to it please do subscribe please consider the patreon uh, support as well so thank you very much thanks for watching please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel please support us on patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future i look forward to hearing from you